Spurs also field nine of their cup final team, the exceptions being Ray Clements in goal and Mark Falco at number 11. That's skimmed off Ray Ranson and then McDonald with a mistake and Falco is in here, pulling it back for Galvin. Good stop by Joe Corrigan, whose defence let him down there. No wonder they're having a go at the two fullbacks. I've never seen two errors like that in such quick succession. There was a great row going on in the defence after that. Here's Hutchison. 15 minutes gone. Away by Graham Roberts. Here's O'Neill. To Boyer. Good save by Ray Clements. That was another foul. Clements missed that, Caton! Well, Ray Clements wearing gloves, obviously, in conditions like these, but the ball slipped from his grasp there. On again, there's Boyer in there waiting, so is McDonald. That's Gow, and McDonald is well forward here, and onside, according to the linesman and the referee. Yes, no decision given against Bobby McDonald there. Hutchison. Boyer's in there. Oh, and that was a chance for Jerry Gow, who just didn't make proper contact. Oh, it's O'Neill in here for City. And blocked in the end by a combination of Miller and Roberts. Reeves is there, away by Falco, Hutchison, oh, struck Hoddle, Hutchison again, McDonald's in there, Tuitt's in there, oh off the line, and a shot by Gow, well Dennis Tuitt has scored goals like that before, remember the overhead kick once that won the League Cup final for City, well he holds his head because he was so close again, but Graham Roberts back there doing a fine job, and with the goalkeeper beaten, Tottenham survived, Archibald, Villa. Oh, and Tony Galvin in space here. Corrigan touched it out by Caton. Here's Archibald. Oh, and a touch is taking it in. Steve Archibald drove it back in. And it may even have touched Mark Falco as it went into the net. I thought it did, actually. So those two Spurs strikers can argue about who claims the credit. Galvin drove the shot, it was beaten out, Archibald hit it, but I think it just touched Mark Falco on its way in. McDonald, and here's Kevin Bond. O'Neill. There's Bond again. And Reeves comes in. and takes Reeves is there oh and Ray Clements O'Neill shot it was and what Clements uh, got up to there was a little bit debatable for uh, the England keeper he's hurt now Bond with the flick on oh well Tewitt went in first McDonald came in last and the Tottenham header defeated them both Miller gets up this time Well, the match of the day cameras were here the last time City lost a home league match on the day John Bond took over last October. And the team that's ended that run is Tottenham Hotspur, who hadn't won here for 11 seasons. Manchester City nil, Tottenham won. Man United would be the latest visitors. Hubble has ever take. And it was Roberts' header. Why Duxbury headed it, I don't know. And neither I imagine would he. And it ends up with a goal scored by Hazard. Archibald in the six-yard box, Roberts behind it. Oh, he might get a free header and does! <laughs> Wilkins takes the kick. Here's Burkles. And he's got it at the second time.
Archie Bowles. Oh, good try! And what a lovely goal! Now, Miller has come up to join his attack, as has Graham Roberts. And Archibald and Crooks are already there. Roberts has scored! Graham Roberts with a beautifully timed header. Crisp as you like into the back of the net. And that's from a boy who was born. Southampton really got to have a go now to pull one back. Keegan to Moran. And Moran has done it! Well, you can't ask for anything better than that. Kevin Keegan finding Steve Moran, and Moran levels it. And really, what a splendid exhibition of attacking football it's been. Only one goal apiece so far, but it really has been intriguing. And here's Archibald with a chance. Great stop. Corbett's got a chance. And the young substitute comes on and scores a dramatic goal. To try and beat Hewton before he can get the cross in. There's a break on here now for Spurs. The flag stayed down, and here's Falco. Oh, what a lovely goal! He really took that one so well. Mark Falco. Bit of a mistake there, and Villiers in. Brook. Leave it for Hoddle. What a goal from Glenn Hoddle. That is superb. Well, Middlesbrough punished for that. And uh, Clements really would have made the headlines if he'd let that one slip through. But now it could be Tottenham who end up on a scoring note. Here's Velia. And Platt makes the mistake. And Ricky Velia cashes in. Tottenham score in the dying seconds of extra. Hoddle, who seems to be able to find anybody with ease at the moment. Ardelius, Crooks, and a shot. Oh, a terrible mistake by Jennings! Can't believe it! Crooks can't believe it either. And you can be sure Pat Jennings can't. He puts his hands... Galvin, Falco underneath, and Gallagher looking very awkward, and that's a penalty. Well, there was no doubt that the arms were round... And Hoddle, who the last time he took a penalty on this ground, had to take three against Peter Shilton and didn't succeed. Now tries against Bradshaw and does. It's actually his first goal for 11 matches. Coming in the 10th minute of this match. And Bradshaw seemingly suggesting there was an almighty swerve on the ball. Certainly he was beaten by the flight of the ball. Huddle once more. Good decision by the linesman because Farco was offside on the far side, but Crook certainly wasn't. Here's Galvin. Oh, he's done well to put it back. Via! Three to put it back to, Berry again with the challenge, Villa, that's his hat-trick. Falco, Villa, to Perryman, they're queuing in the middle. Crooks, oh, what a header! That was an absolute bullet! provided but the power of the header it screamed into the net lovely touch Via Crooks Perryman and rather Galvin Hoddle this is Perryman I was ahead of the game 
his chance. And the story is completed in the second leg at White Hart Lane. Spurs make heavy weather of a tie against Dundalk in the next round, 2-1 on aggregate. And it was a laboured performance against Eintracht Frankfurt of West Germany in the next round for almost an hour. In the second leg in Frankfurt, Glenn Hoddle is the hero. Spurs went behind after only three minutes. A neat 1-2 between Nachtwey and Bocher. Clemens completely exposed and it's Bocher who finishes well. But worse was to follow, just 15 minutes gone and Tottenham looked on the way out. Eintracht attacking on the left, the ball takes a lucky deflection, but Bum Kun Cha is completely unmarked and the South Korean takes full advantage. After that, Ray Clemens kept his side in the game with several brilliant saves, and then with extra time looming, Glenn Hoddle got the crucial goal. Good work on the left by Chris Hutton and Ricky Villa, and Hoddle's finishing was to be perfect. So Spurs through to the semi-finals, and great relief for manager Keith Birkinshaw. Now it's Barcelona, the match they were to call a bloodbath. The night when one reporter will say the crowd saw no football match, it was a kicking contest. And for poor Ray Clements, so long a model of consistency and an inspiration, it's a nightmare. It was his first mistake in months, says manager Birkinshaw. Alessanko with the kick for Barcelona. Straight to Hoddle. Carrasco. Olmo! Oh! What an error by Ray Clements! Disaster! Olmo for Barcelona! You wouldn't wish that on a goalkeeper at any time, at any level of football, and it's happened to one of the best in the world. Ray Clements won't want to remember that. Olmo lined the shot up from way out, and poor Ray Clements. Hazard and Simonson. Perryman. Foul by Moratia, the number 12 foot. And Crooks reacts, and the referee in the middle of it again. It's like a street fight out there now. There are players pushing each other and remonstrating, and having these little verbal tussles like the one between Alessanko and Roberts there. Morataya was the player book number 12. In again by Hoddle and Jones arriving and that's a goal! Graham Roberts coming in at the back to equalise for Spurs Roberts the scorer Hoddle chipping it in Jones arrived first and Roberts came in behind him Spurs have equalised with five minutes to go the lights go out in the second leg in Barcelona due to a power failure and Spurs go out too Awaited ball there for Hazard. What good skill on the ground by young Mike Hazard. Crowd enjoyed it. His cross is a beauty now for Hoddle. Played it again there. Oh, and a beautiful goal by Pelco. What a magnificent goal by Tottenham. Pelco on target again, but Hazard and Hoddle between them absolutely. Saved.
superb in the build-up. Rooker has it here. Jinking his way, jinking his way, lost it temporarily. Floated a lovely ball here for Hoddle, and what a touch that by Hoddle. And there's Falco coming in with another superb touch. 1-0. Just had four days down at Bissom Abbey to tone themselves up for this game at White Hart Lane. Fashion in. Oh, it's a shot. And the first real shot on target coming from Mark Proctor, but straight at Rakelands. to the Tottenham goal in the first half. And Shilton diving out. Fashionu up, finding Wallace. McGovern looking again for Fashionu, playing a game for Wallace. And Wallace with a shot just wide of that Tottenham goal. The first real dangerous break that Forrest have had in this game. The first occasion really when Fashionu and Wallace have combined so well, suddenly the little Scott gets it onto his right foot. Going one. Here's Spillery, working it with Pate, Spillery again, drive there by Alan Mays, who felt it was deflected. Mays, who's been to League Cup semi-finals with Watford and Swindon, hoping to reach an FA Cup semi-final with Chelsea. And he certainly seized his chance from Fillery's pass to hit that with his left foot. Was it deflected? He thought it was. Rhodes Brown, what a fine ball. Mays this is. Pates and Walker are making ground in the centre for Chelsea. Walker's come near post and Pates and it came off Paul Miller. The ball in was good from Alan Mays. Clive Walker at the near post might have capitalised. Colin Pates tried to. Deflection off Miller for a corner. Paul Miller now for the FA Cup holders Spurs. Oh, it beat Shivers and here's Archibald and Shivers got a foot in and Archibald did as well. Well, Gary Shivers got caught first of all by that floating high ball Archibald comes in Shivers gets a foot in 
It also touches Nutton and Archibald with his left foot, the wrong side of the post. Perryman is debating with the referee. Fillory wants to line the shot up. He's got Rhodes Brown to his left. He drives it. Oh, what a goal! Fillory produces the goal that matters for Chelsea. Ray Clements is beaten in a domestic cup tie for the first time this season. The first goal Spurs have let in in either the FA Cup or the League Cup, and it's scored by Mike Fillory. What a shot! He waited his time, drove it with his left foot, and it flew through that crowd of players and beat Clements right in the corner. Ardiles to Hazard to Hoddle, good save by... Oh, and Archibald! Archibald's got his first goal since he came back. It was a gift, really, but he was on hand. And unlucky Steve Francis, the 17-year-old keeper. The ball was played to Hoddle. The shot along the ground, Francis got his hands to it, couldn't hold it. And Archibald makes it 1-1 for Spurs. The way the game has gone, Hoddle again to take up goes Miller oh dear me those of the first division and Chelsea of the second Hilton for Tottenham Archibald little flick for Hazard Hoddle moving up on the right. Hoddle shot. Oh! What a goal. A beautiful move by Tottenham. And Glenn Hoddle fires in their second to turn this cut tie on its head. They came out for the second half, a goal behind, and now they're a goal in front. And it was an educated move which says so much about the Spurs. Little flick there. On by Archibald to Hazard. Out to Hoddle. And in that space, he's lethal. Right across the keeper. Spurs are ahead. This is Archibald. Well, Fillory never intended to do that. Here's Galvin. Crooks, it'll touch inside to Hewton. Opening for a shot by Hill. Oh, what a fine save by the 17-year-old keeper. Chris Hilton foiled by Francis. After an extraordinary slice by Fillory had put Chelsea in trouble on the far side, Tottenham attacked. Hilton found room for the shot and great reflexes by this emerging young goalkeeper. Look at the length on that. Hoddle. He shook off Fillory there. And he made room for Hazard. And they just can't stop Glenn Hoddle. Hazard the scorer, his second important goal in a matter of days. But Fillory lost out to Hoddle and that's where it cost Chelsea dear. Because Hoddle set the chance up and Hazard buried the shot. Fillory for Chelsea. And here's Walker, and there's Pates, and a chance there for... Oh, it's there! Alan Mays gets one back. Tottenham lost their concentration, and Clements beaten by Mays. The ball played in from the left, and Tottenham didn't defend well there. Walker got a touch on it. It came back to Pates, his shot was blocked and Mays beat Clements inside his near post. A fine cut tie, and Glenn Hoddle has a hand in the three goals which Spurs scored in 14 minutes, which effectively for Keith Birkinshaw and his team sealed this cut tie, that spell, 
and enabled them to go on with their assault on four trophies. Chelsea fought so well, admirably, in the absence of Droy and Lee. They played a major part in making this a memorable match. Hoddle thanks the fans. Let's hope they behave on their way home, because the players certainly played their part on the pitch with a final score at Stamford Bridge of Chelsea 2, Tottenham 3, and Spurs go into the semi-final. Here's Crooks. Outside him is Tony Galvin, two the other way. That's Crooks' shots. Oh, what a fine save by Peter Hucker. Brilliantly tipped over. The first moment of excitement, and Crooks let one fly there from 20 yards. What a good save. And now it's Hoddle. And Archibald is going in. Impressive little spell from Spurs. That's a Flanagan shot, which may have taken a slight deflection. Rebound favoured Rangers, rather, but Tottenham still have possession with Perryman. One or two runs being made here into space, Archie Ball. That was very, very awkward, Roberts, but the ball's already over the line. The ball was already on the top of the net, put there by Peter Hucker from Archie Ball's cross for a corner. Although Graham Roberts, seeing the ball come back, was quick to put it into the net. Galvin short to Hazard. That's his shot, and Hucker turned it away, and there's Roberts offside against Steve Archibald in the six-yard box. Spurs adopting a shoot-on-site policy, and isn't it working well? Mick Hazard driving it from the corner of the penalty area. The goalkeeper can only push it back into play. Watch the player on the six-yard line. He's offside. Here's Perryman. That's lifted up towards Archibald. And it found him. And he's got it down and shot over. Well, he'll be pleased with his first touch there, Steve Archibald. He controlled the ball wonderfully well. As it was driven through... Over the head of the defender, Rhoda, Archibald got it down, but the shot was too hard for the defenders. It's been a fairly comfortable second half until Hazel did that. Straight to Archibald. And he's found Crooks. And Crooks fires wide. A mistake by Bob Hazel, which has gone unpunished by Tottenham. Garth Crooks has had two chances from the left-hand side of the goal, and in both occasions, his first control has played the ball too wide and made the angle worse. Can you see that there, how he is straining to try and hook it back in? Two ...to give Garth Crooks a chance to get Tottenham moving. Archibald's gone through the centre, and this could be it! Archibald is through on the goalkeeper for Spurs. And Hucker has saved! And Archibald goes and sinks to his knees. That is the miss of the match so far. The throw from Clements to Crooks, the perfect through pass. He had too much time, really. He lost control almost, and Hucker got a hand to the shot. And still Rangers don't clear it properly. Roberts. Hoddle. Little ball in for Perryman. Can the captain do it? Oh, and Hucker was brilliant and brave. He's hurt as well. Nobody's fault. It was a genuine collision, but my word. Steve Perryman... Almost had the perfect finish there to the afternoon. Hoddle chipped the ball in. It was again a lovely pass. Perryman chested it down, and look how bravely Hucker dived at Perryman's feet. They have time here to build something with Chris Hewton. Galvin's found a good position here. Hazard, and this is going to be Hoddle to strike one. And the goalkeeper got down, and again saved. And even a nice sporting as Hoddle's shot was taken at the second attempt a sporting pat on the head for Peter Hucker from Steve Archibald because this goalkeeper unknown before this season in big-time football has excelled himself this afternoon from Hazel looking up to see if Stainrod's in position which he is nice turn by Stainrod and Clements forced to go down in the end very hurriedly may have seen it a fraction late 
and the referee blows for the end of normal time and those tired limbs thanks to the brave and bold goalkeeping of Peter Hucker the tired limbs of both teams asked to sustain a further 30 minutes Spurs have had the better of the 90 minutes they've had more of the chances but the score at the end of that period is nil nil time to build up some useful attacks this could be another one he's found hazard oh and Archibald is onside another clear chance for him and again he's missed it the Rangers players are furious they've gone to Clive White appealing for offside and as Jimmy Hill's always said, there's split-second decisions, those, and so often the linesman is right. He may, yes, he may just have hung on there. You couldn't tell from that angle, really, but certainly the flag stayed down, and Archibald, for the second time, was clean through and couldn't score. Two. Here's Galvin. Hewton. Little Gary Brook, he'll try a shot from here. That's the sort of spectacular stuff the fans want to see. Driven by Gary Brook from distance with his right foot. And Peter Hucker, well, he's entitled to save that, actually. Oh, good tackle by Hoddle on Waddock. Roberts. Hoddle. Hoddle! It's there! It's there! He won it with the tackle and he scored the goal! Glenn Hoddle, the pride of Tottenham, has sent the fans delirious again. Hoddle won it with the initial tackle on Gary Waddock. Waddock was on the floor when this happened, injured. Hoddle shot, it went through Tony Curry's legs, may have even slightly brushed the inside of his leg. Hucker unsighted, 1-0 to Spurs. And Glenn Hoddle has produced it again when it matters for Tottenham. It did just get a deflection off Tony Curry, but it's Hoddle's goal. The rain's coming down. The afternoon has turned in more ways than one. Stain Rod with the long throw for Queen's Park Rangers. Roberts it was Hazel's flick, and Fennick was in there, and it's a goal. Terry Fennick. The set piece ploy works again. Fennick is the scorer. Five minutes left, and it's Rangers' turn to celebrate. And the long throw works again. Simon Stainrod took it. Watch for the flick on by Bob Hazel, number five. Watch Terry Fennick come in at the far post. And the header over Ray Clement's head. It's 1-1. gone and there's the equaliser Terry Venables off the hook for the moment anyway and the whistle confirms the fact Terry Fennick from the northeast saves the Cockney Cup final for Queen's Park Rangers Keith Birkinshaw who's had so much disappointment this season Spurs thought they'd run it through Glen Hoddle and they had it snatched away from them, as indeed they've had three other prizes snatched away already this season. And Fennec shows his delight. The first fullback ever to score from open play in a Wembley final. And what a priceless goal for the second division side. A replay next Thursday here at Wembley. Roberts. Away from John Gregory, Graham Roberts, Archibald to his right, he overran it, but still got through. This is Graham Roberts, was he brought down? Penalty! Tony Curry came in behind him. Fennick was in close attendance, but a penalty has been given, and it was a splendid run by Graham Roberts. Terry Venable's side couldn't stop him. Bob Hazel made an error in that early on, but Roberts went on. And what happens here? Tony Curry comes in with the tackle, down he goes, penalty, Hoddle to take. Scores! Never has a penalty been missed in an FA Cup final at Wembley. And Tony Curry gave that one away, the Rangers captain. And it was the Tottenham playmaker, Glenn Hoddle, who wasted no time in converting it. To Hoddle. 
Crooks against Hazel. Archibald against Hazel. Crooks again for Tottenham. Archibald pulled it back. It's going to come to Graham Roberts, who fires over. Tried to keep it down. Came onto it with the side of the foot, but Archibald's cross it was. And Flanagan. And again. And awkward stain. Well, no, the whistle's gone. The whistle is gone, there was a player offside. They're appealing, but the flag was up on the far side, it's no goal. Just keep your eye on what happens. The first shot by Flanagan. The second shot by Flanagan. Look at the player on the... May have been up earlier against the player on the right, but watch now. Stainrod falls, the shot by Mickle White goes into the net. Model again. Newton. This is Galvin with the shot. Taken chest high by Peter Hucker from Tony Galvin. Oh, the mistake was by Roberts. Can Curry capitalise? He's found Mickle White, who's gone past Hewton and has resisted the other challenge. And Stainrod is in there. And Clements did just enough coming out to put Stainrod off. Very good play here by Gary Micklewhite. Look at the way he resisted the two challenges. Now then, Stainrod is coming in. There goes Clements off Stainrod's head, over the bar. Simon Stainrod with the cross. Flanagan is going up this time with Clements, and he was... This is Gregory, and it's Miller and Perryman away. Clements challenged fiercely by two opponents, couldn't collect that one. Gregory got the ball back in, a timely clearance by Miller, and then Perryman. And in they come, Gregory notably, Hazel at the far side, this is Fennick. Oh, he went down, another penalty. No, the linesman flagged, Fennick seemed to be the player who was impeded. I thought I saw a flag go up there. I think Rangers might have a case for a penalty. It's not been given. This is Galvin. Well, there's a talking point. Brooks. That was a let-off for Tottenham, and here's Hewton. Or rather, here's Hucker. Galvin. Roberts is nearly in here. Archibald's having a go at it. Archibald! Fine save by Hucker. He seems destined to deny Archibald at every strike. Fine reactions from Archibald's shot. It was an instant drive here by Steve Archibald with the right foot and an instant save. And there could be something on here for Rangers. It's Stainrod with two coming in from the far side. And there's a deflection on that, splendid save. Stainrod shot, a slight deflection, Clements equal to it. Just caught the second Tottenham player, Clements going to his left. A fine sustained spell here by the second division side, really examining Tottenham. Gregory didn't quite meet it, what it did! Oh, and that's another brilliant save, but it's not over yet. Flanagan puts it back, and it's put wide of the goal by Miller. What a cat hit it, and Clements was even more brilliant there. There was a Rangers player in his way, number nine. Look at that, over his head. Great stop. Among other things, here's Stainrod. Referee said, play on to Curry, who had possession. Gregory is closing in. Flanagan's there as well. That's awkward. He's at the bar. My goodness me, they've exposed the far post again. John Gregory. Clements was beaten there. The ball swung beautifully across by Stainrod, that was. And Gregory coming in behind, got a delicate little side foot touch, and look at that, off the bar. How unlucky can they be? Brook with the clearance for Spurs. And it was knocked back there by Neil out to Curry. 
Gregory in the centre, so is Hazel. And Hazel! Oh, blocked by Miller. Just watch the way Curry drive the ball back, and there was Miller on Hazel. Eight minutes to go. Crooks for Spurs. Perryman. And that's Hoddle. And that's Archibald. And Archibald and Perryman going together. Marvellous goalkeeping by Hucker. So brave. He turned two of them there, and in the end, Tottenham were glad to see Perryman step in. Archibald's away. Put there by Hoddle. Can he make sure this time? Archibald. He's at the post. An agonising cup final for him. Archibald with that opportunity to make it 2-0. At last he beat Hucker, but he didn't beat the post. Well, the stadium humming now as the Spurs fans Look again anxiously at their watches. They know, as Glenn Hoddle knows, that we're in time being added on by the referee for stoppages. And there it is. Tottenham Hotspur have won the FA Cup two years running. But Hoddle's congratulations of Waddock say it all. Ray Clements is relieved because Queen's Park Rangers put up a wonderful fight in the second half here. And Tottenham hung on for dear life and they hung on successfully.